be there for like days and shit like that. So. Yeah, I'm so glad I Yeah, me too. She's right there. She's right Turn to page number 191. 191, in my heart there rings a melody. 191. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody, tis the melody of love. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. I love the Christ who died on Calvary, for he washed my sins away. He put within my heart a melody, and I know it's there to stay. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. Twill be my endless theme in glory, with the angels I will sing. Twill be a song with glorious harmony, when the courts of heaven ring. In my heart there rings 
a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. 198, please, 198. Joy unspeakable, 198. Joy unspeakable, I found his grace is all complete. I have found his grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free, yes, free indeed. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. His joy unspeakable and full of glory, all that has never yet been told. I have found the pleasure I once craved. It is joy and peace within. What a wondrous blessing I am saved from the awful gulf of sin. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. His joy unspeakable and full of glory, all that has never yet been told. I have found that hope so bright and clear, living in this realm of grace. Oh, the Savior's presence is so near, I can see His smiling face. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. His joy unspeakable and full of glory, all that has never yet been told. I have found the joy no tongue can tell, how its waves of glory roll. It is like a great or flowing well, springing up within my soul. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. His joy unspeakable and full of glory, all that have has never yet been told. Amen. 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 Thank you for singing tonight. And uh, glad that you're here. Are you glad to be in church tonight? Amen. Amen. How many of you, how many of you, 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 you're here already and how many of you are still somewhere else? Amen. Uh, you know, sometimes that happens. Amen. Yeah. You're bodily, you're physically here, but your mind might be somewhere else. Amen. And uh, so tonight as we go to the Lord in prayer, I'm going to take a little bit of extra time tonight and just let you pray and talk to the Lord. And then I will, uh, I'll have an open in prayer after that, all right? And we'll just be nice and quiet for a moment. Just ask God to steady your heart and get you ready. Say, God, just take away any distractions tonight. I want to be here. I want to be with you. I want to be in your presence. Yes. Amen? Is that okay? And uh, we'll just kick up. There's no reason for us to come this far and not get what we're supposed to get. Amen? Amen. So let's, uh, let's steady ourselves for a moment if we can, please.
we thank you tonight for the opportunity to come and to be here, to attend church. And uh, in order for us to be in attendance, Lord, we must be here not just bodily, but also, Lord, our spirit, our mindset. And it's very easy for us to come in and, Lord, our mind is still moving around with things that we've had to face today. Lord, I don't know what everyone has had to deal with today. Just things of life. Perhaps difficulties, chores, projects, things at work, things in our personal life, uh, things that are going on in somebody else's life. Lord, certainly uh, we can be preoccupied with the physical ailments. And Lord, we can move around and be distracted by physical movement of people. But also, Lord, uh, we can certainly be troubled in our spirit. And I just pray tonight that all the busyness and all the things that may have us preoccupied tonight would be set aside and you'll help us to be able to have church. Lord, we can't have church without you. And so we ask you, sweet Holy Spirit of God, to help each and every one of us that we have not just come to go through the motions of this. Lord, if we come in and we sing some songs and our spirit becomes in tune with you, Lord, how wonderful to worship in thy presence and to know you as we should. Lord, and come in and have a chance to, to give in the offering plate and to worship in that way. And then, Lord, we're mindful of the message tonight. We want it to be a help to us. Lord, we already know we have an enemy that would like to come and steal the seed even before it's had a chance to be covered over and to prevent us from getting what it is that you have for us. Lord, I pray that that wouldn't be the case with any of us. Lord, including me, that my spirit and my attitude would be here and be right before you as I deliver a message. Lord, that it would be done not in a carnal way, but certainly in the spirit. And so, Lord, we ask you for this. Sweet Holy Spirit of God, come and meet with us in a very special way. And we'll give you glory and honor and praise for it. And Lord, be with those who can't be here. I know some are sick and ill and uh, different ones, Lord, that uh, are unable to be here tonight. I pray that you'd bring healing and help in a marvelous way. We sure need you. We love you. Meet with us now, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Tim, come lead us in another song, would you please? Let's go to 188, please. 188, the love of God is greater far. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave his son to win his erring child. He reconciled and pardoned from his sin. O love of God, all rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. When hoary times shall pass away, and earthly thrones and kingdoms fall, when men who heed refuse to pray on rocks and hills and mountains call. God's love so sure shall still endure all measure less and strong redeeming grace to Adam's race the 
saints and angels song. The love of God, our rich and pure <coughs> and strong, it shall forevermore endure. The saints and angels song. Could we with ink the ocean fill, and were the skies of parchment made of song? Will and every man ascribe by trade to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry? No could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. O love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you once again for... Uh, being in church tonight, we're very grateful uh, for your presence. Continue to pray for Miss Aida, if you would, please, and uh, uh, that our mind would, uh, excuse me, that our prayers would be with her, and also mindful tonight of little Declan. Little Declan's doing well. Uh, they took him off of oxygen. He's breathing on his own. His heart beat is doing well, and he's asking for cheeseburgers, amen? So it's good. Well, maybe not quite yet, but he's getting there. I'd like to buy him his first cheeseburger and shake, sister, when it comes time, amen? But his parents are very uh, appreciative of our prayers and thankful for that, and uh, uh, what a blessing that is, amen? And so uh, we're mindful of her. I also want to bring to your attention tonight uh, the passing of uh, Charles Redmond. Charles Redmond went to be with the Lord this afternoon, and uh, Charles Redmond was... Uh, uh, the pastor of the church, when Cecilia and I first surrendered uh, to the ministry. Uh, we moved from California, moved back to Tennessee, and he was pastoring there where my brothers were at, and uh, we joined the church. I went to see him and said, uh, I'm here, whatever you need, I'm ready to serve. Two weeks later, the youth director uh, uh, left the church, and he said, you want to be a youth director? And I said, sure. <laughs> had no clue as what I was doing, but... Uh, he gave me my first opportunity in the ministry that way. And so pray for his family, if you would, tonight, as uh, he went to be with the Lord uh, this afternoon. Brother uh, Philippe, if you would, uh, let me turn this on for you, and then you, uh, you take us to the throne tonight. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful day you've given us, Lord. Midweek Bible study, Father. Thank you for bringing us safe in here, Father. We need you, Lord, more and more every day, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace. Love this matter of giving. May we do it cheerfully, Lord. Not gradually. May we learn this, Father. Please teach us. Anoint us, preacher, with your Holy Ghost this evening, Father. Anoint us all, Father, with your Holy Ghost. Change us, Lord, please. Bless the offering, Father. Multiply it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you, Ms. Michelle. All right. As you uh, pray for that family, by the way, Vicki is his wife's name and uh, his daughter, uh, Lori, and I'm going to forget the other one. Lisa. Lisa and Rebecca. Rebecca's the, Lisa's the oldest, right? Yeah. So if you would uh, continue to uh, uh, pray for that family, if you would, and I'm sure his, his girls and his wife would very much appreciate that. And then also... Uh, some um, instructions uh, Friday night is the Genesis study at uh, 7 o'clock, Friday night, 7 o'clock. And then uh, Saturday at 1030, we're going to go out door knocking. If you want to go uh, with us, you're welcome to. You can sign up at the sign-up sheet back there. That way we just prepare and we know who's, uh, who's planning to come. That will be uh, helpful as we make plans for Saturday at 1030. And then also, if you would... Uh, Saturday night men's prayer is at 6.30. If you're a uh, man, you're able to attend that. And uh, we may have some ladies that want to come and start doing that. If you do, you let me know, and we'll have some uh, conversation about that too. And uh, then also May 30th, uh, Howes Anderson Tour Group will be here, and uh, Pastor uh, Wilkerson will be here with the group. That'll be a blessing. We'll enjoy that. June 5th is a men's barbecue at 1 o'clock. Please sign up in the foyer so we know that you're coming. And then there's going to be a graduation for Sammy and Isaiah and Jaden uh, Shanks uh, here at the auditorium at 11 o'clock. We're still putting all the details together on June 19th. And so if you'd like to be here and support them with that and a little reception to follow, uh, we just make that announcement to you also. All right, uh, Acts chapter number uh, 1, Acts chapter number 1. We'll pick up where we left off last week in uh, reading and studying through the book of Acts. Uh, last week we talked a bit about the Holy Spirit. Uh, first week we talked about the do and teach of Jesus' ministry. And uh, tonight, uh, verse number uh, 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. We'll just read that one verse, and then we'll uh, pray. And tonight I want to talk to you about, he showed himself alive. He showed himself alive. Father, thank you uh, for this time that we have to study your word together. And I do pray uh, that, that uh, we would... Uh, see ourselves as taking up the mantle uh, of this New Testament group of people who proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that that baton has been passed down to us, and that, Lord, we would uh, show ourselves strong in these things. And may the teaching that we have as we go through the book of Acts challenge us inspire us, motivate us, convict us, and uh, Lord, set us on the right course, give us direction and guidance, and uh, encourage us, certainly, strengthen us. Use this uh, study tonight in a mighty way, we pray. Help us, Lord, uh, as we are here together, and you in our presence, we in your presence. I pray that, uh, Lord, that there would be uh, certainly an understanding in our heart about these things, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Acts chapter number 1 here in verse number 3. He showed himself alive after his passion. And I want to talk to you a little bit about this and then we'll move on. But uh, in, in this, the passion of the Christ, and I'm sure uh, some of you are familiar with uh, the movie years ago that came out about that. And i just tell you a quick story about that. Um, uh, years ago, right as that movie was coming out, I... I, uh, I was preaching up in Utah, up in Mormon country, and a man had come to church that morning, and as he came to church that morning, I preached a message about uh, the sight uh, of uh, the uh, cross and the sight of heaven and the sight of hell as to get somebody's attention about Christ. And uh, he 
came forward, a Mormon man that they'd been inviting came forward and got saved that morning. And uh, he, he said that it was the, the description of the cross as the Bible gave it. He said it was more powerful to him and more convicting to him than the movie he had seen. And I just th- thought about the power of the scriptures. The scripture is so powerful. And uh, the other thing that goes with that is the Holy Spirit of God gives power to the scriptures. And that should be something that we never forget. That as you're witnessing or you're uh, being a testimony to a neighbor, at just that right time as you're talking about the scriptures, the Holy Spirit of God can make it so vivid and so real that it penetrate through whatever's going on in their life and you can reach them with the gospel. And so never forget that. Never forget about the power of the word. We say, well, I can't this and I can't that. How many times have you heard people say that? I can't this and I can't that. But we're not really looking for you to have. We're looking for the scripture to have. Amen. The scripture is the power. The, the Holy Spirit is the power. And if you and I will just pray for boldness, that we'll be bold enough to speak and then let God use that. Uh, and th- these these uh, words are here. These uh, uh, images are here with what God gives us in the Scripture. So he speaks about here about the passion after his passion. Uh, no, notice the definition, the impression or effect of an external agent upon a body that which is suffered or received. Passion. Passion. Suffering. Em- empathetically, the last suffering of the Savior. The feeling of the mind or the, sensibili- uh, the sensible effect of impression, excitement, uh, per, uh, per tub- pertubience, I'll get that right, that's such an interesting word to me, an agitation of mind uh, as desire, fear, hope, joy, grief, love, and hatred. Zeal, ardent or vehement desire. Now, the reason I read you all of those many different directions is you think about the passion, the suffering of Christ. It embodies all of those emotions. There, there's, a, there's a lot that goes on with the suffering. You, you, if you go to the Old Testament tonight and you were to read chapter number 18 of Psalms and chapter number 22 of Psalms, you, you'll, you'll find that the anger of God with regards to uh, what they were doing to his son was there present. That's where you see that the darkness uh, that it talks about how that the sky became dark and the earth quaked. Why? The earth shook, the Bible says in the book of Psalms. What is it talking about? It's talking about God's feelings and his emotions as his son is being crucified. And the passion that is there with that. So there's, there's a lot that's going on with the zeal, the passion, and then the suffering, the passion with all the different emotions that are coming together as the Lord Jesus Christ hung on the cross and he's enduring a process. And then finally, suffering the the death, he gave up the ghost. Gave up the ghost. As God is dealing with sin, uh, he had to deal with sin through his own son. Now, I don't know if you and I can really wrap our minds around the passion. I mean, as, as much as we can, we're still going to be limited. The power, his passion against, against sin, and at the same time, for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So both of those things are working. There's a working one against and one for. Working against sin, but for you. All at the same time. And, and there's this struggle that's there. And the enemy's there. And if you read Psalms, I won't take time for it tonight, it speaks about gnashing upon him. What is he talking about? He's talking about the evil spirits gnashing upon the Lord Jesus Christ. It's something that the world couldn't see as Jesus is being crucified, but it's happening at the time that Jesus is upon the cross that the wicked ones are gnashing upon him with their teeth. The dogs of hell and all of those things that it speaks about. And so, uh, as the Father is dealing with this, and the son is dealing with this in his passion against the great lies of Satan, in his passion for 
the great truth of God. All of that's being pour, poured out upon the Lord Jesus Christ. All of those feelings and all of those emotions that are taking place. So when you see that word there, it means so much more than a lot of times what we think of when we think about the word passion. His passion, his suffering, his death, his burial. That's all a part of this. But the real subject that's uh, here is... Uh, that's given to us that Jesus also makes note of here is to whom also, notice this, he showed himself alive after his passion. And tonight I want to focus a little bit on that part. He showed himself alive after his passion. After he rose from the dead, you know, he had laid down his life, but then after three days the Bible says he took it again. And he left the tomb empty. Uh, he, he then goes out and he's going to show himself alive. And one of the biggest issues that there is with regards to the gospel is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is his resurrection. There is no religious leader. There's no icon, no, no personality that's led any kind of religious group or people of faith who has got up from the dead. Right. Muhammad didn't do that. Gandhi did not do that. Buddha did not do that. Elvis is still dead. Houdini is still dead. People still go to their graves with the, as a vigil trying to uh, have some wish, some hope that they believe that somehow they might show back up alive or that they'll come back from the dead. But the resurrection is what separates the Lord Jesus Christ from any other man that has ever led any kind of, quote, faith group or cult group that there is. The resurrection separates all of that. Only one, and that's Christ. Amen. And that's what makes it so powerful. Notice, if you will, hold your place and go with me to Matthew in chapter number 27. Matthew 27. The resurrection. Something as you're presenting the gospel that you keep before people to understand that Jesus wasn't just a great teacher. He wasn't just a great prophet. Uh, he, he rose from the dead. And, and the Bible gives us the understanding as it speaks about this is that he was seen of others as a result afterwards. Now, uh, please understand, that's why the devil... Uh, had stirred and still continues to stir questions about his resurrection. He did it, he did it as the grave became empty. Uh, chapter number 27, notice we'll read some verses here. And he begins to try to very quickly squelch the truth and start putting forth lies immediately. Look at verse 20, 62 of chapter 27. Now the next day that followed, the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive after three days, I will rise again. Notice they're already trying to position themselves here. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure. Good luck with that. Until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last heir be, shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. And the idea was that they could put guards there at the, at the tomb. They could put soldiers there at the tomb and guard it so that his disciples would not come and steal him, steal him away. So they went and made the sepulcher sure. They got that stone rolled in front of it. And I, you know, I don't know what they did as far as caulking it and nailing some boards up or whatever they tried to do. Put their soldiers out front, made it as sure, sealing the stone and notice, setting a watch. They did all that they could possibly, by their manpower, do. But notice, if you will, that Jesus arose. Amen. The ladies go. There's a great earthquake. 
the angel descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, notice, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. And of course, they're going to go, and guess what? They don't see him, and that's good news. Say amen right there. That's good news. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring the disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail, and they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my, my, bro, thy, excuse me, my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they, notice this, see me. See me. Verse 11. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priest all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. Well, now, you know if that would have happened, there would have been some dead men. Because those that were supposed to watch that would have been in trouble with their lives. But that didn't happen. And if... This come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. That large money, that, that's a large amount of money that they were given. And this saying is commonly reported unto the Jews until this day. You can see as the devil already is putting forth a, a lie to go against what? The resurrection. What does all this signify for us? It signifies the power of the resurrection. It signifies the importance of the resurrection. It signifies for us the meaning of the resurrection. And it signifies for us the purpose of the resurrection. Look at uh, first, hold your place here. We'll come back again a little bit later. But I want you to go with me, if you would please, over to uh, 1 Corinthians in chapter number 15. 1 Corinthians in chapter number 15, the importance of the resurrection. 1 Corinthians in chapter number 15. And when the devil works so hard to cover something such as this, obviously there is real power, there's great importance, there's true meaning, and there's boundless purpose in letting the, letting the world know he's alive. It's critical to let them know he's alive. If there's no resurrection, notice what the Scripture says. Look at verse number 12. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, this... E then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain. You know what he says? If you don't have the resurrection, you have nothing. You have no resurrection, you might as well go back home. Right. There's no need preaching if there's not a resurrection. If there's no resurrection, there's no salvation. Notice what he's given to us here. That means your faith is also what? Vain. It's meaningless. It doesn't count for any. If there's no resurrection, it doesn't count. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. And, and notice also, ye are yet in your sins. The death, burial, and resurrection is the gospel. And the resurrection. The gospel is incomplete without it. Look at Acts chapter number 4 as we consider the importance of the resurrection. Acts chapter number 4. The disciples understood it. They understood that this is what they were up against in proclaiming Christ risen. 
It's the, it's the subject that, that the enemies of Christ did not want the people to know. They didn't want them talking about Jesus being risen from the dead. We see that there at the, um, at the uh, end of uh, chapter number uh, 28, excuse me, the middle part of 28, is he's speaking about covering up and saying it's a lie, and his disciples came to get him, and all of that, the enemy tries to put forth that lie. Notice, if you will, that once again, the importance of the resurrection. And it came to verse number 1, as they spake unto the people, the priest, and the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, notice this, being grieved, that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. You see what they were grieved about? The preaching of the resurrection. And they laid hands on them and put them in the hold until the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. Notice how many got saved. And the high priest and them are going to gather together. Notice verse number 7, And when they had set them in the midst... They asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? The miracle that they did there in uh, chapter number 3. Then Peter, being filled, uh, excuse me, then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God, notice this, raised from the dead, Even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. He just inserts what? The resurrection. The resurrection. This is the stone which is set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby you must be saved. What has he given them? They brought him before them, and what's he do? He preaches the gospel to them. (laughs) <laughs> there he is at his trial, and what's he doing? Preaching the gospel. What's he preaching about? The resurrection from the dead. Notice verse 18. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But, but Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen, notice that, seen, and heard. What are they talking about? Seen and heard. Uh, we, we saw him. When did you see him? After he rose from the dead. We can't, we're just going to testify of what we've seen. After he, he was killed, you guys put him in the grave, we saw him again. We, we, we touched him. Look at verse 21. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. It grieved the enemy of God. It grieved the enemies of Jesus. Notice this now. They thought killing Jesus would put an end to the matter of Jesus and his teachings. It didn't work. Now listen to this. Killing Jesus actually gave life to his teachings. You thought you were done with it. All you did was give life. It's blooming now. Even the disciples who were not fully on board because they didn't fully understand, now that they understand, now that their opening is, 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 uh, their understanding is opened up as we talked about last time, uh, now all of a sudden uh, the, these teachings of Jesus are coming to life. They're being spread about by the disciples. The Bible says to us in 1 Corinthians 2.8, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If they'd have fully understood the plan, they wouldn't have crucified it. They played right into God's hand by crucifying Christ. Look at Acts chapter number 4 as they go back to their own church. Notice, if you will, notice the response as they get back to church. Verse 31, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, church, and they were all filled with the 
Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness, and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common, and with, notice this, with great power gave the apostles witness of what? The resurrection. It's central. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. It's central to, 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 their, to their teachings. It's central uh, to their purpose. The resurrection is the very center of what they have to talk about. It is what differentiates the, the, the Christian religion from any other cult that there is out there. Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, whatever, their leader, whatever kind of teacher that he was, is dead. Yep. Jesus is alive. Amen. And this is what distinguishes him from every other. And the disciples are, are, are preaching that. They're rejoicing about it. It's a reason to rejoice. It's an opportunity to talk about the risen Savior. It's, it's something that we still recognize and we still celebrate. Yes. And hopefully not just at Easter time, but it's an opportunity to uh, celebrate the risen Savior. The gospel is incomplete without Jesus is alive. I serve a risen Savior. It, it's central to everything that we are as Christians, the resurrection. Notice back at uh, Acts chapter number 1. Acts chapter number 1. We'll go just a little bit farther with this. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days. I want to stop uh, there, and I want to take up this many infallible proofs. Criterion. It speaks about of cert certainty, infallible proofs, criterion. It's the point of reference. It's the standard. It's the norm. It's the yardstick. It's the benchmark. It's the touchstone. It's the test. It's the formula. It's a measure. It's the gauge. It's the scale. All of that, the barometer, the indicator, the litmus test, the specifications, the guide. All of this is the criterion, if you will, the criterion of certainty. What power in the resurrection? By many infallible proofs. Look at uh, Matthew chapter 28. Uh, we'll look there just for a moment. We looked at some of these uh, scriptures. And then Luke chapter number 24. Luke chapter number 24. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. There's proof of the resurrection. There's eyewitness testimony. Testimonials of being with Jesus and spending time with Him. Being around Him for not just a day, but for 40 days. 40 days of, of evidence. Look, if you will, once again at verse number 8, as they're running away uh, from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, did, bring, uh, did run to bring His disciples word. Word about what? We saw Him. He's alive. He's risen. Look at verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. They couldn't hardly believe their eyes. They're doubting their own eyes because they see the Savior. It was such an uncommon thing as they're looking at it. Look at Luke chapter number 24. Luke chapter number 24. Evidence, proof. Testimony. Look at uh, verse number 13. Behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together in reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them 
whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in those days? And he said unto them, What things? Now, that's, to me, that's one of the funniest things in the Bible right there. This is Jesus, as they're trying to tell him what happened to him at the cross, and Jesus said, What things? What are you talking about? I just find humor in that. Thank you, Lord. And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we, te- but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto a village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening. And the day is far spent, and he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave to them. Notice this, and their eyes were opened, and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. Boy, that must have been... It uh, must have been a, a, a wonderful and awful thing all at the same time, amen? There he is, and you see him, and you're excited, and then he's gone. And you think, did I just, did I just see something, or was I really seeing him? And then he's gone, and he's out of there. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the Scripture? Look at John chapter number 20. John chapter number 20 tonight. John chapter number 20 and verse number 19. John 20. By many infallible proofs. These are testimonials that have taken place. You've seen to those men who went to the grave, but they find it hard to believe. Find it hard to believe with their eyes what they're, what they're seeing. Look at John chapter number 20 and verse number 19, if you would. Then the same day, at evening being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst. He just appeared in the room to them, saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye The Holy Ghost. Look at verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. Testimony, evidence. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then said to, saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and uh, reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believe it. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. These are testimonies, witnesses, people that, that saw him. Notice this, people who touched him. They saw him, they could touch him. This was not just a spirit that resurrected. This is a physical, bodily resurrection. 
He's a physical body. And this is what he's proving to them. He's showing it to them. Go back to Acts chapter number 1, if you would. Many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days. They spent some very valuable time with the Lord Jesus Christ in speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, to, the, to him the things con, uh, concerning the kingdom of God. I want to take just a little bit longer with you. Uh, I don't want to go too far into this. Uh, next time I want to talk to you more about, uh, I want to talk to you more about the kingdom of God. But Jesus is going to spend some very valuable time with them. And I, I don't know how you, how you rate it. He spent three years with them. But remember, he spent three years with them with their understanding being turned off. Yeah. Now he's breathed on them, and their understanding is going gonna, is gonna to be on. And, and, and now, in 40 days he's probably going to be able to accomplish more with them than he did in those three years as they walked with him, as far as their understanding is concerned. And just to, just to have it in our minds that because they're understanding, when a person's understanding, you can be, uh, I was thinking about it this afternoon, you, you can be at work with somebody and they, they're a lost person and you can talk to them about the things of the Scripture and it's, it's just not going to reach them. They're going to seem like uh, physical things, fairy tales. Uh, most, uh, most people who are in the physical realm only are people who are looking for proof of something. Uh, when you say something about Jesus was virg born of a virgin, ah, no, 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 that's impossible. It, it, it's, it, it doesn't compute for them. When, when you talk about the parting of the Red Sea. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. And, and German rationalists, even, even as people were believing in some supernatural things in the early days, one of the, one of the most crucial times in our nation was when the German rationalist and, and their influence, through their books and all of that. Remember, the printing press was wonderful. Now listen to this. Printing press was wonderful to give us this book. Come on now. Yeah. 1611 and the printing press. and Come on now. That was wonderful. But Satan got a hold of the printing press too. Remember, we talked about on Sunday the, the work of what? Diz. Or the work of the opposite. Satan's work is an opposite work. Jesus resurrects from the dead, what happens? Well, the disciples do what? They're going there and looking and all of that. And, you know, Mary coming and all of that. But guess what? Satan showed up at the sepulcher also. One person shows up at the sepulcher to tell their version of it. Satan shows up at the sepulcher to tell his version of it. What did he do? He paid people to lie. The, the truth is there. Right? The angels, the messengers from heaven. Come on now. God sent the messengers from heaven to tell the truth. He's not here. He's risen. Amen. The truth's given. But at the same time, the truth is given what's also given. Lies. And so the word of God, it's powerful. It's going forth. And then the German rationalists show up. And Darwin showed up at the end of the 1800s. At a time when you think, man, the flourishing of the Word of God and the truths of God's Word, it's all happening. More missionaries, I was reading this week, more missionaries were sent out. Uh, international missions. A guy by the name of A.T. Pearson, uh, more missions. There was like 2,000 missionaries. It went from 2,000 missionaries to 13,000 during the time that he was teaching and preaching and telling people at the end of the 1800s. What did Satan do? Oh, no, no, i got to do something about that. Stop! And so he started printing books, books of lies. And the German rationalists started speaking against things like virgin birth, parting of Red Sea, bodily resurrections. Oh, wait, she just went in and she swooned inside of there. And 
No, no, they didn't really see. that. What they saw is they saw a mirage of his spirit. No, no. They felt him. They touched him. He was alive. Amen. But Satan's going to have his lies out there. And so during those days, those 40 days were critical. 40 days to condition and recondition his disciples. Jesus spent much valuable time with them. And I like to think of the time he spent with his disciples who now they're going, now catch this, they're going, they're graduating from being disciples and they become apostles. They've graduated. They could put their little tassel on the other side, say amen. And they're going to enter, if you will, an intensive course for 40 days after their understanding is turned on. Once they receive the Holy Ghost, and after, after Jesus had breathed on them, their understanding came alive, and they were to a, able to understand things that to, to, uh, before that time were foreign to them. Didn't make any sense. Went in one ear and out the other. And there, there must have been, and I thought about it this way, there must have been some oohs and ahs as Jesus started teaching there in those 40 days. Oh, ah, <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah, I get it. Oh, no, now I understand it. There must have been some real oohs and ahs, Brother Russo, taking place during those 40 days. They must have got excited about it. Realizing what they were a part of. We, we, we don't know all that they did with Jesus during those 40 days, but certainly Jesus must have taught them the Scriptures and they understood it in a way that they could not have before. Yes. He brought clarity, I'm sure, by His teachings. And somehow His teachings were most powerful. Now listen to this. Because of the presence of of his bodily resurrection. They're standing with him. They saw him crucified. They witnessed with their own eyes him being crucified. As he suffered the passion. As he suffered that, they watch it. And there are many of them watching it in, in fear, scared from a distance. Yeah. Keep going. And now all of a sudden, they're brought near. And Jesus said, you go tell my disciples, you tell them to come. I want to talk to them about some things. And they must have, as Jesus came into the room and he presented himself, can you imagine, they must have been somewhat sheepish. Somewhat ashamed. And Jesus said, no, 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 it's, it's okay. It's okay. We're going to go forward and we're going to conquer the world with the gospel. And he must have charged them up. Oh, man. And, and from, from resurrection proof, now listen, from resurrection proof, it went to kingdom talk. Just gets me excited thinking about it. Next week, next week we'll talk about kingdom talk and what he had prepared him for. Read that verse with me again and then we'll be closed. Notice, if you will. To whom also he showed himself alive after... I circled that in my Bible. It's a good word to circle. After his passion. By many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days. Not just an hour, not just a day, but 40 days. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom. Kingdom of what? Kingdom of God. Next week I want to have a conversation with you about kingdom talk. Stand with me if you would. Lord, our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. But Lord, I pray that our hearts are open. That Lord, this time together won't just be a, a mundane teaching of your word. I, I pray that you won't let, let me be mundane. I pray, Lord, that you'll do something in my heart, do something to my lips 
that, that will empower the words that you give to me for this time. Lord, I, I pray that it would be for thy glory and for thy honor. Help me to decrease that you might increase and that you'd show yourself strong and you'd teach us what you want us to know. There may be more things this week you want to put in the notes that aren't in the notes. Some things, Lord, as you did tonight, you gave to me standing here that I didn't have before I stood here. And Lord, I just pray that as we have this conversation, you would prick our hearts and encourage us, strengthen us, give us confidence that we need to speak boldly about Christ yes. and his resurrection. We need that. In this day and hour when so many people are lost and on their way to hell, Lord, may we preach the gospel with a fervency and a fire. We love you. We thank you for what you'll do. In Jesus' precious name, amen. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, sister, you play softly for us, would you please? Would you ask God to stir your heart during this study? Tell the Lord that if you're going to come in on a Wednesday or on a Thursday night, that you don't want it to be for naught. And then you want Him to give you all that you can handle. that you do something with what he gives you. That we would not just be hearers of the word. Ask him to make you a doer. Three, please. Page number three. Jesus paid it all. Page number three. I hear my Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I hold. Sin has left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. For now indeed I find Thy power and thine alone can change the leopard spot and melt this heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. For nothing good have I whereby thy grace to claim. I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's lamb. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. it white as snow and when before the throne I stand in him complete my soul to say my lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all all to him I owe 
wrapped our crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. He did pay it all. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being here on a Thursday night. I pray that this study would be a blessing and a help to you. If it is, and you can invite somebody else to listen, uh, give them a link to our uh, website, and uh, they can go there and, and catch part of the study there. That would be wonderful. Brother Emerson, I'm going to ask you if you'll come this way, and I'm going to ask you to close this in prayer tonight. Can you do that for me? Thank you. Brother Emerson is a blessing to me. He has been able to help us with uh, the fire marshal and, and getting things up to code. We had some things that were out of code. And uh, Megan, she was very good to deal with, by the way, but uh, helped to get a lot of these, uh, these emergency lightings and, and exit signs in different places changed out. You'll notice some, uh, some uh, decals by some of the doors and, and, and all of that, making sure our permits got taken care of. And Emerson has been a true blessing and helped with that. And I really, uh, I really appreciate that very much. Would you close this in prayer tonight, sir? Sure. Thank you. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering us all uh, tonight in your word. Um, thank you for everything you've done for all of us here. Thank you for our pastor, Shannon Scott, for preaching your word and uh, bringing us all together. Um, thank you for also bringing me to your, to your throne, uh, bringing me here to serve you and being able to do everything that I can to um, keep this place of worship intact and have everybody coming here uh, day in and day out. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Goodbye. It's been sung by kids in Sunday school as wonder filled their eyes. It's been trampled on by scorners, cherished by the saints, but only through.
Jesus.